Welcome to our video walkthrough of a new company set up with Spire Systems business management software. In this video, I will be showing you how to create a new company and walking you through the initial company configuration in the Spire client. We will be using a fictional company, SK Canola Oil, which manufactures cold pressed canola oil for retail and bulk sale, made from Saskatchewan grown canola. So our first step is to remote into our Spire server, which is hosted on Windows Server 2012 in this case. And we've already got the Spire server component installed on this server. So you can see down here, I've got my Spire server uh, tray icon, which I can pull my company list out of. And so in here, I'm going to create a new company. And we're gonna call that company SK Canola. And fill out some company information for the company. And then our default administrator details. So we need a first and last name as well as a username and password uh, for the first user that's able to log into the company. And then we pick our fiscal year end for the new company, which we'll leave as December 31st. And then a snapshot schedule, which allows us to set a schedule for hourly, daily, weekly or monthly for how often our company is backed up so that we can revert from uh, corruption or, or data loss. And then I finished add the company. And then here we add, or we have to enter our master password for the database, which is set up when you install the server to modify the company list. Okay, so about a 60 to 90 second wait, and now we've got our new SK Canola Oil Company that's appeared in our company list. You can see from the company list here, we've got several different companies in the list, and this is all under one license uh, for our main company. And so you can have multiple companies under the same license, but you can't have multiple locations that aren't connected on the same network. And so um, with the one license, you can have uh, as many companies, and because of the licensing model, it's licensed by installation and not by session. And so I can have four or five different spires if I want open on one computer with different companies in each of them. Okay, so going back to the client desktop here, now I can run Spire and log into the new company that we've created. So you can see SK Canola Oil is in the list now. And we'll log in with the user and credentials that we created. If we can get the right password. There we go. So the first thing we'll do once we get into our new company is we'll go to edit company settings and do our initial setup. So in the company section, we've got four tabs. The address tab, it gives our, as pulled through our basic information that we put in when we set up the company. The banking tab gives us options to fill out electronic funds transfer information so that we can set up uh, direct payment for accounts payable or for a payroll schedule. Phone format lets us set up the format for all phone numbers in the system in different modules. And then tax info lets us fill out tax licensing information, which shows up in a couple of different places, and lets us pick our default purchasing taxes. So in this case, uh, we don't get charged PST because we're a reseller. And so I will just have GST on our purchasing. Moving down to the next section in general ledger. Within the general tab, we can set up a location segment or a profit center segment. Uh, you can see here that they're grayed out because right now we haven't created any additional segments. So if I come to the segments tab, I can create a new segment with a length and a name. This one's often numeric, so I'll call it something generic. And then under groups, we can see what our default uh, groups are that exist right now. And we can create or modify them in their type. Subgroups allows us to create subgroups from our normal groups, giving us further detail with categorization and reporting. 
and then allocation accounts, which allow us to spread a transaction across multiple accounts or a cost across multiple accounts. And then fiscal periods. So this is where you would set up your fiscal periods and look at your historical periods. Under reports section, from within here we can uh, enable report security that prevents certain types of reports from being emailed, exported, printed, or previewed by any user. Under email, we can configure an email server to allow us to email using a template for reports. And so when you print, for example, a sales invoice, um, you would often print that to or save as a PDF and then attach that PDF to an email which you would send out to the end user or client. But with this, uh, you can hit email instead of print and it will, uh, using a template, pop up with a little preview window so you can edit the template per, per invoice if you want but then it automatically sends it out to that user or that end, end client, uh, saving you a couple of steps in, in between where you're using your mail client and attaching the PDF as an attachment. Um, also, multiple multi-currency options allows you to have multiple accounts with different currencies and track them. Special accounts per module and type of transaction, allowing you to pick which accounts you're using um, for sales and revenue and for point of sale. So this is the options that pop up when you're receiving payment in a point of sale application. Um, so you can change this to be different point of sale options depending on what kind of payments you're taking. Sequence numbers allows you to pick where your various transactions start at for tracking numbers, including in sales, I can turn on additional, uh, detail by having different types of orders start with a different letter. So I can track sales, RMA, work order, and booking order separately and report on them separately. And then production order and template, which we will be using with this company. We'll leave all of those at their general defaults. Variables, let us, uh, you'll see these pop up in, in a variety of different places within the software. And so if I already know what these are, I can come in and change them to something more relevant to our workflow or come back at a later date and change them. Sales departments lets me pick uh, different sets of sales account cost of goods and inventory. So based on the item or the customer, I can pick a default uh, sales department and so that they hit their relevant department instead of the main one. Sales orders, uh, there are a variety of options in here to help the sales order module conform to your process including removing order and back order quantities if you're always shipping, um, costing options, uh, and also requirements. And so if you require a salesperson and territory to be filled out on each order, uh, this is where you can add that requirement so that they can't process an order without filling those things out. Uh, and again, warning on zero price and other pop-ups that you might want as you're processing. Also, we have um, back order options, freight defaults that you can set per sales invoice, and then copying features. So if you want, uh, when you copy an order, you can have it keep the sales order number, that kind of thing for tracking surcharges that you want to add to an order messages that should pop up in the, in the sales order module or in the POS module and then some miscellaneous options, including a ad template so that you can add ads to your POS screen if customers are looking at it in a retail setting, and then options for credit copy and repeating orders. Purchase order options. Uh, you can choose to have purchase orders not post accounts payable. So if you're just tracking inventory without cost, that would be a scenario where you might do that. Employee defaults, so filling out um, Default city and province it saves you a little bit of time when you're filling out a new employee and then labeling the contact tabs. So if you want these to be specific like home, uh, home, maybe remote and cell and then the payroll department that they're a member of. We've only got one set up, but you can have separate payroll departments. 
under payroll, again, uh, different departments and different accounts that are hit for payroll, including deductions and benefits that you can add. Customers, defaults for when you're creating new customers, uh, contact labels, sales taxes that are by default charged to them, and then credit limit, credit limit options so you can have uh, no credit or unlimited credit based on how you want uh, sales invoices to be posted against accounts. Vendors, same, same idea again for address defaults. And then the contact labels, this might be accounts payable and credit and sales. And again, if you want to have a default credit for your vendors or not. Accounts payable aging periods, same for accounts receivable, whether you're charging finance charges on that. Inventory defaults. So here we're going to check off multiple warehouses because multiple logical warehouses are very handy for separating your inventory when you're inventory centric. Uh, receiving transfers, post adjustments to GL is a good option to keep track of the financial side of your inventory, especially if you're using uh, physical warehouses in different locations. Landed costs, serialized inventory. In this case, we won't be using serialized. Uh, the costing method, first in, first out, or average. We'll keep that on average. And then production orders, we will be using the production module uh, with this company. So we have scrap and yield enabled as well as revision levels enabled. And that pretty much covers the company settings and initial setup for a new company. So uh, thanks for watching. And we have some more videos describing how the pr production process with this company works using Spire. And you can find the rest of those videos in the annotation and description below.